In this video, we're going to discuss the topic of uh, osmosis so that we can understand res reduced osmotic pressure and how that can lead to edema. So first, let's talk about osmosis. So let's say I have a container here. And let's say you know, I have this little screen here. And it's it's met it's it's kind of a mesh a mesh screen here, and it's kind of it's kind of in in between this container here, and I have water over here. Let's say the water level right here is this high, and the water level on this side. I should make that blue. And the water level on this side is this high, but inside this part, I have I have these molecules like this. I have all these molecules here. These can be proteins. These can be what they call a solute, um, something that needs to be dissolved, and then this water is a lot of times called a solvent. Anything that dissolves a sol solute. So in the example of if you have a bunch of, ta you know, if you spill some salt on your table and then you sprinkle water on it, um, that those salt crystals will dissolve. The water is being the solvent and the salt is being the solute. Or if you have paint on your hands after you've done finish painting something and you need to, you know, get the paint off, if it's an oil based, the solute would be the paint particles and the solvent would be paint thinner, for example. So those concepts, just solvent and solute. And let's say I only have like maybe five particles on this side. Well, what's going to happen? Well, nature always wants to kind of uh, everything to be equal for example you know if if you have if you have one room that's cold and one room that is hot and you open the doors between the two what's going to happen well the hot air is going to move towards the cold air to kind of e like equilibrate make make the two rooms being equal in their in their heat the same thing, the basic concept applies to osmosis. If I have only five um, particles in this part of the container and I have a semi-permeable membrane, you have to have this um, permeable membrane. So that's supposed to be an E. So if you have a permeable or a semi-permeable, semi meaning that it will just let the water come through and not the particles. If you have a semi-permeable membrane, then what will happen is you will see a net flow of water coming over to this side. Why? And then at the end, so this is like before, and then after, you have, a, you have the screen here. You'll have one, two, three, four, five particles here and the water level here, and then the water level will be clear up here. And you'll have these particles here. So this is before, before, and this is after. So the water will kind of flow into this way so that everything will be equal. So the concentration, you know, we we have the concentration of some particle this brackets around this means just means the concentration and what is the concentration it just means how many um, particles particles per volume of of whatever so if I took after this if I took this much volume if I took this cube Let's say this is one liter. Let's just say that I took that cube and I lifted it out to right here to examine it. Uh, 
there would be two particles, two particles per one liter. So there'd be two particles per one liter of fluid or of, of substance here. Well then if I took if I took a clump here and then I took this out and I examined it, then it would be there would be two particles in it. So it'd be the same. There'd be two particles per liter. That's what concentration is. So osmosis is this process if you have a semi permeable membrane this solvent usually in water especially in the in the human you know in in us the humans um, <laughs> there will be is mostly water but this water will flow back and forth between departments or compartments to make that the con so make that everything will be equal and make that the concentration the particles per volume will be equal and osmotic pressure osmotic pressure depending on whether you're standing here or whether you're standing here but osmotic pressure is how much pressure would need to be applied to prevent this water flowing into this area so osmotic pressure is amount of pressure to avoid osmosis so if I if you know collectively um, and pressure is force per area so if I had you know let's say this one square here is you know let's say uh, two centimeters by two centimeters that's the area and if I had five pounds pushing here well then I'd have to count up how many squares there is and then that would ha be how much pressure I would have to push back against this against this um, natural tendency for water to come over here to equal everything out. So having that in mind, let's go back up here and talk about reduced plasma osmotic pressure. And in the previous videos we talked about, you know, how if you have a high pressure um, system in hydrostatic pressure, you're going to have a net movement of fluid out into this into these tissues, and the the plasma plasma colloid osmotic pressure is mostly. Oh, let me get another color here. Is mostly um, created by albumin, and so albumin is a little protein. It floats around in your blood, and it's mostly responsible for this osmotic pressure. So there are, uh, let's say there are six particles per one liter out in this tissue. And let's say there are um, four particles per one liter in the blood. What will happen? Well, water will want to move out to diffuse to diffuse these six particles into like a liter and a half or whatever so that there be the same concentration so water will want to move out but in the case of a capillary because all this water is already here in the tissue and there's tons of because the water left here so it means that the concentration of particles without water or the concentration is low here then water will want to move back in but in the case where there is low albumin um, where there's the case of low albumin in the case of nephrotic in the case of nephrotic syndrome where your your kidneys um, your kidneys are too porous there's too many holes in your kidney in your where the blood is filtered that the albumin is actually leaking out it's leaking out into the leaking leaking out into out of the kidney so that will decrease your amount of protein inside your blood so that the water will not want to come back in so that's how you can get 
reduced osmotic pressure, which means that there'll be more fluid out here in the tissues, which will cause edema. Another type is liver cirrhosis, ascites. Albumin is made in the kidney or in the liver, and if the liver has uh, you know cirrhosis in it, where the liver doesn't function as well as it should, then albumin won't be produced. So then you're going to have um, then you're going to have low levels of albumin, which will then will cause low. Uh, the concentration of here will be low. You know, as in this case, compared to the outside, so water will not want to flow back in to equalize the amount of particles per one liter of water. Malnutrition. If you don't eat a healthy diet, if you don't eat enough protein, well then albumin cannot be created. You know, albumin can't be created from nothing, so you have to eat healthy so that the albumin can be created by the liver to maintain this osmotic uh, this osmotic pressure and protein losing losing gastroenteropathy so if you inside your gut there's something wrong with your gut and you lose protein out into the gut it's the same thing of it as leaking out into the kidney you're losing protein which is going to change this concentration or how much particles per you know volume of blood and if it's lower than what it is out here in the tissues water will want to stay out here Water will want to stay out here to um, equalize the amounts of pressure when that will cause um, low blood pressure or low blood volume and then it will cause edema out here. Edema. So that is reduced plasma osmotic pressure. We'll see you in the next video.